Perfect. Um, hi, everyone. Uh, today's class um, is, uh, well, today is uh, August 2nd, 2021. And uh, we have today's class. Uh, this is a weekly class. Today's class is about uh, rental residential lease. I'm sorry, rather residential lease. Um, in this class, we're going to go over all uh, the steps of residential lease um, from qualifying a tenant uh, to the lease itself. Um, we're broadcasting from uh, our office, uh, Jonathan Solomon Realty Office in uh, Hollywood, Florida on uh, 1720 Harrison Street. Um, and uh, although this class seems sounds like it's a beginner's class, uh, but in some somewhat it's uh, also an advanced class. Uh, there's going to be a lot of advanced points in this class. So um, I hope you'll enjoy it, and uh, we're going to start right now. So uh, residential lease. What do you do the first time you um, you receive a potential? renter, potential tenant uh, that you need to find uh, a property for. So the first thing that you do with the potential tenant is the same as with the potential buyer. You need to qualify him or her. Um, and qualifying when it comes to buyers, it's making sure they have a pre-qualification letter, they have proof of funds, they have all their ducks in line. Everything is, is in order. They have uh, the finance, they're being pre-approved and so on and so on. Same goes to tenants. Um, we need to make sure that this tenant is qualified for the properties we want to show him or her before we even take them to see those properties. And what does that mean? Um, there are a few steps uh, for us to qualify a tenant. And those are general steps, but they're pretty much repetitive throughout uh, most of the qualification process, most of the tenants. So um, I'm gonna go into our agent desk system. Um, and I just created a demi um, transaction for this type of uh, transaction, for this type of, of transaction, which is a rental transaction. In this case, I created uh, a residential uh, rental contract to lease, which means I as the tenant agent represent the tenant and wants to find a place for our tenant. So I'm going to go over the checklist that we have here in order to qualify the tenant. Uh, so very, very important, but not a must, but very important in our case is to have a proof of income from the tenant knows what type of income the tenant makes. Um, does he receive, um, does, he has a steady, does he have a steady job? He receives certain income. Based on his income, we'll be able to find him a property. Another very important thing is his credit report. Every potential tenant, and that's a recommendation, but that's something that we really should follow. Every potential tenant but that we're going to help, we need to have their credit report to know if their credit is good or not. Many landlords uh, qualify tenants to uh, be fit or unfit to the property by their credit report. So we need to run their credit report. Either there is a paid options for that or free options for that, doesn't matter, but we need to have their credit report. And that's different from credit score, which is just a number. Credit report give us all the details about the tenant. Uh, unpaid bills, paid bills, consistency, and so on and so on. Uh, the tenant's ID, we need to know who this tenant is. Um, the ID will tell us his legal name, which will also help us later on to prepare his documents. But in this case, it's very, very important to have his ID to know who he is. Um, and another very important section is the rental application form. Rental application form, will give us all the information about the tenant. And let me show you what a rental application form is. I'm gonna find one and I'm gonna share it on the screen very quickly. Um, in just one second. Um, Mm -hmm. 
I'm sorry about that. It will take just one more second. Okay, there it is. Gonna share it now. Oh, okay. Okay, so I hope you guys can see that on your screen. This is the rental uh, application form. Um, it will have all this one, coincidentally, is fillable, meaning uh, you can type on it and fill up all the information. It's a very good one. If you need one like that, just let me know. And it will ask the potential tenant to fill up all his information uh, prior uh, residency, prior employment, current employment. And that's very, very important because potential landlords will want to know that. And also you as the tenant agents will want to know that in order to find the right uh, property for your tenant. So that's about um, the rental application. Now, let me share again. Let me share again our screen right here. Okay. Um, so those are the most important um, requirements that we need to have from a potential tenant. Um, once we have those and we know our tenant's credit score, we know our tenant income, and we think we have the right properties to qualify for him, uh, to find for him, we can look for them on the MLS just like any other property. When we find the right property for him, the first thing that we're going to do, um, the first document that come into place would be the contract to lease. A con and I'll prepare one right here. I'm just going to take one of our, of our company listings, residential rental listings. Um, okay. Make sure that I have that. Okay. Going to take one of our residential rental listings, and I'm going to create a transaction for it on Form Simplicity, so we can go over all the requirements. So I'm just going to create a transaction really quick. On the residential lease. And I hope everyone can see the screen. Okay, so we created a transaction for this one. And the first document that we're going to go over, the first document that we're going to use when it comes to residential rental, residential lease, would be a contract to lease. That is basically the offer that we're sending a potential landlord. Um, this is an example for the co of a uh, contract to lease. We have uh, the parties, as usual, as almost on any other documents. Um, we have the parties, the landlord, the tenant. Um, afterwards, we have the time for the landlord to agree to this offer. Um, the next part would be who's going to prepare the actual lease. Most time, landlords are the one to create the lease, meaning the listing agent, the landlord's agent is going to be the one to prepare the lease. And the reason is the landlords are the ones setting uh, the terms. And most of the time, the tenants are the one who accepting the terms. Uh, so we have the landlord, we have the tenants who's going to accept it. The landlord is going to prepare the lease. The tenant is going to accept the terms of the lease. Uh, deposit. This is a deposit that we're going to hold until the tenant is going to move into the property. Uh, usually, uh, right amount of, the, of uh, deposit would be equal to one month of lease. So let's say the lease is $1,300 a month. We're going to hold $1,300. Um, where the where the, the escrow is going to be hold, um, held, um, 
in our company, we all escrow. So it's very, very easy. If you need information about that, let me know later and I'll tell you how to do that. It's very, very simple. You can do it anywhere in Florida. Uh, deposit, you don't need to come to the office or anything like that. You can do it remotely anywhere in Florida and it's very, very easy. So we can hold it, the escrow at our company. Um, in this case, $1,300, for example, let's say. And just to be sure um, that we're actually holding that um, when, sorry, um, when the contract is actually executed and not before, because we don't want to hold escrow uh, for no reason. So we're going to write that upon execution, which means we're going to hold it only if this contract to lease will be executed. And not if not, we don't, we're not going to hold escrow. Um, the next part is describing a little bit about the property. Is the property furnished or unfurnished? Uh, so it's an option for us to select. The lease, when is it going to start? Um, so we can set up a starting date um, and end date, which is going to be a year after. Just like that. Um, the next part, section number five, is money due before occupancy. So we usually have first month, which is the moving month. Uh, that's usually common. Um, last month, we can add that security deposit, um, security for association, pet deposit, all of those. And we can set up the dates of when this money is due. Usually at the day of, of the moving or day before moving or so on and so on. The next part, um, this part will describe where the escrow that was held until moving date, where is, how is it going to apply into the moving funds? So we can select in most time that it's going to be applied for the first month rent. Uh, so that 1300 is actually going to be applied for this 1300 when they're going to be released from escrow. Um, rent payments, um, we should determine here how much would be the total of the lease amount. So let's say it's 1300 and the, the rent, uh, the lease term is for 12 months. So we're going to do 1300 by 12. And obviously we're going to put the total right here. Um, what taxes will apply to this? Usually in Florida, rent over six months as zero uh, tax, zero dollar taxes on it. Um, if it's different, we can put it right here. Um, is the rent going to be paid in full or is it going to be uh, once a month, once a week and so on? And when is it going to be paid? Um, pets allowed or not allowed, smoking allowed or not allowed, very simple. Are there any utilities that's going to be included with the lease? Any utilities that the landlord, quote unquote, or they're already included in the lease that's gonna be paid by the landlord? we can put them right here. Um, is there any maintenance that's going to be included by the tenant that's going to be excluded from the landlord? So any responsibility that the tenant will take over, we can put it right here in section number 10. Uh, number 11, um, homeowner association approval, um, whether it's a homeowner association, a condo, a co-op, if there is an approval that needs to be uh, received by the association prior to moving in, um, who is responsible for the application fee, uh, how much the application fee and how soon uh, will they receive the approval in order for the contract to be valid. So that's right here. If there are any additional terms, we can put them here. Um, number 14, this is for service members. Um, if your potential tenant is um, a service member, then obviously we need to select yes. If they're not, we need to select no. Um, failure to perform in case any party doesn't perform once they execute this contract, what happens then? Um, most of the time, the tenant lose their deposit if the tenant doesn't perform, if the landlord doesn't perform, uh, there's not much to do. They're just 
well, they just the, the tenant has the option to of of course uh, take delegation and so on and so on. But that's in case the there's the either one of the party doesn't perform. Uh, section sixteen very important for us um, to indicate the names of the uh, tenants agents and tenants broker and listing agent and listing broker in order to receive commission. That's very, very important that those names will be will show up here. Um, that protects you later on to receive your commission when time comes. Um, and the signature section with uh, the party's information, also very important to have. So once we have that, once we did that and we prepare this document, we had our potential tenant signing these documents. We have all their information gathered together, their income, their uh, proof of funds, um, their credit report, their tenant application, everything we have ready with their driver's license. We can send it as an offer to the listing agent. Just send an email with all this information, with this document signed, I'm sorry, with this document signed, with a contract to list signed by the tenant and send it to the potential landlord to receive it and or listing agent, of course, which represent the landlord to receive it and to accept our offer or deny or maybe counter our offer. Let's say the listing agent accepted the offer and now we're looking on from the listing agent point of view. There are two type of leases. When we need to create a list, there are two type of leases. One, which is specifically for condo, co-op, apartments, every residential uh, building which has over two units. So three units or more will be included in the residential uh, lease for apartments. Residential lease for single family home and duplexes, meaning any residential building that has two units or less. Either it's a duplex or it's a single family home. We're gonna go with that type of document. So we're gonna start with the condo, with a multi-family or uh, apartments uh, residential lease. And we're gonna go over it really quick. Um, the first section of the lease Either one of them is the disclosure. I'm sorry, non-lawyer disclosure. Um, these documents is a must to have both parties sign it. Um, if you're preparing the documents, you have to have this. both parties sign these documents, both the, the landlord and the tenant. And the reason is, is these documents clarify to them that you are not an attorney, unless you are an attorney. Uh, but if you're not an attorney, uh, this form will clarify for them that you're not an attorney and you're just preparing these documents according to the law. You're filling up the sections within the documents. So that's very important to have both the parties sign this document. The next section is, of course, the number of months that the lease is going to be effective, uh, that we, is going to be for, uh, the date where it's going to be effective and the end date. Every contract in Florida must to have a beginning and end. Um, and that's true for the contract to lease, for um, uh, listing agreement, any contract. Uh, the party's names, then the party's contact information, the unit number, the address, name of the condominium, which you can find always on the MLS, the city, the zip code, any additional personal items that's included with the lease, whether it's fridge, stove, furniture of some kind, anything that comes together with the lease, we need to include here. Um, the rent payment, rent amount, um, on which day 
um, of the month or week is it going to be paid? Are there any taxes on that? And what would be the total after the taxes? Again, if it's, if it's longer than six months, there are usually no taxes in Florida. So just so you know, but if you need to know specifically for each uh, property, just let me know and we, I'll let you know exactly for that specific property. If the lease is not going to start um, exactly on the first of the month and they're going to be a proration, this section is for that. Um, security deposit. How much security deposit is the landlord going to hold? Okay, right here. Advanced rent. Is there going to be an advanced rent? Maybe last month or maybe last two months, whatever advanced rent there's going to be, we can put the amount here and where, where, what is it going to be applied for? Um, pet deposit, late charges. Is there gonna be any late charge? And when is it going to apply? Five days after um, grace period that we give to the tenant, five days grace period. After those five days from the rent they do, um, there's gonna be apply a late fee of such and such amount. Bad check fee. Any other fees that we wanna add right here, that's the place to add it, okay? Um, is the, does the landlord have uh, an agent? This will be the, the information where to put the agent's information. Maybe you're receiving information, uh, notifications for the landlord, maybe the landlord himself. This will be the place to put it. The address to send notifications to the landlord. This will be the place to, to, uh, to put it. Um, we're gonna scroll down a little bit more. Um, if the tenant's allowed to modify or change anything in the apartment, that will be the place to check it. Um, that would be a place to check whether uh, ten, uh, pets are allowed in the property. Uh, whether smoking is allowed, um, whether the tenant may create any alteration to the property, that's the place to check it. And um, we're getting now into the maintenance, which is a bit confusing section, and that's why I wanna go over it. Um, this is the maintenance part of the lease, um, and this section will indicate who's responsible for maintaining uh, each section. Now, there's a big difference between maintenance and utilities. Utilities is who's paying the bill for such and such uh, thing that we receive, that the tenant receives. Let's say they have a water bill. Who's paying the bill? That's one thing. But to receive water, they need to have actual foundation. They need to have hoses. They need to have all the foundation in a working condition. So if there is a leak in the water pipe, who's going to repair it? That's maintenance. Who's going to pay the bill? That's utilities. Who's paying the water bill for usage? That's a that's utility. Who's paying to repair the water pipe? That is maintenance. So I hope that's clear for everyone. And this section is about maintenance. So we have a smoke detector. Who's repairing the smoke detector? Um, extermination, who's responsible for extermination? Locks and keys. If the lock breaks, who's responsible to repair it? Um, garbage removal outside um, the property. Who's responsible for garbage removal outside the property? Is it something that the tenant needs to pay for or the landlord needs to pay for? Running waters. So again, for the water to run correctly, who's responsible to make sure the pipes are in good condition? Is that the landlord or the tenant? Hot water, who's, we need to make sure that the water heater or the hot water supplies is in good condition, the tenant or the landlord, and so on and so on. And you can select the right options right here according to what the landlord instructs you. Instruct you, I'm sorry. Um, major repair over a certain amount, whatever a certain amount, usually it's $200 because every minor repair is usually under $200 and major repair, for example, 
um, appliance repair and so on and so on is usually over $200. So any major repair will fall on to the landlord and minor repair will fall on to the tenant. So that's this section. Um, moving on, utilities. Again, utilities is who's paying the bill for the water, for electricity. Not who's making sure that the electricity will be there, but who's, make, who's paying for the usage. So if there's any specific utilities that the landlord needs to pay for or connect it, we can put it right here. If there aren't none, if the tenant is responsible for all the utilities, then we leave this blank. Um, next section, um, assignability. If this uh, lease can be subleased, um, we can check this uh, box right here. Um, approval, very important. Homeowner association condos. Um, if there is an approval that needs to be received by the association prior to moving, um, who is going to pay for the application? Who is going to pay for potential um, deposit that the association requires? Right here, we have those options right here. Um, if the property was built before 1978, it's right here. We have to uh, disclose the lead based spend disclosure. Uh, we can select this option right here and select the right options on the lead based spend disclosure and make sure um, it's going to apply. Um, and everyone signs and initial the right places. Um, this section is uh, important for the tenant to initial. Uh, that means that the landlord is not going to be responsible for his uh, for the ten for his tenants uh, personal property after they leave the property so it's their responsibility to take everything with them um, and the signature part landlord signature tenant signature date and your information right here if you prepare this document if you're the one who prepared this um, this list, the, your information right here, your name, your company's name, the company address, and your phone number right here. Um, another imp important section is early, early termination. Two options, whether uh, the landlord is going to keep the advance rent and deposit that he collected uh, in case the tenants terminates the lease early. For example, let's say if the lease was for 1300 a month and the landlord is keeping two months, meaning 2600, we can select whether the landlord is going to have the option to collect this uh, advance rent and keep them if the, if the tenant terminate the lease early or to take the tenant to court to be reimbursed for the lease itself. So those are the two options. And another important section is the Florida Residential Landlord and Tenant Act. This is um, a part of the lease. I see many times agents um, go to the lease up to this page and then print it, print it all, have their tenants and landlords signed up to here, up to this page, and then leave the entire uh, tenant landlord act out. That's wrong. Um, the reason it's there, it's because it's part of the lease and it's important for us to disclose this Florida Residential Landlord Tenant Act to our parties, to our potential tenant and potential landlord. And it's extremely important to leave it as part of the lease and have both parties initial all those pages. This is basically Florida landlord law. And in order for them to know the law, they need to initial all of it. And for us to make sure they do initial it. And that uh, is very important that they know it. Um, and so that's about that. Don't remove it, keep it there and make sure they know the, the law and initial it. Um, so that is the residential lease for condo. Now, we're going to take a look at the residential lease for single family homes or duplexes. Um, 
that would be anything That would be right here. Um, very similar to the lease uh, for apartments or multifamily. Um, the residential lease for single family homes uh, contain most of the sections that's included on the residential lease for apartments. And the first section, of course, is the non-lawyer disclosure. It's exactly the same as the one for the condos. You need to make sure both parties signs it uh, so they know that you are not an attorney, unless you are. Um, then we go to the first section again, make uh, put in the party's information, the party's name, the landlord, the tenant right here the landlord and the tenant contact information, the property address, um, any personal items that come um, with the lease will be uh, disclosed here, whether it's a fridge, stove, so on, furniture, uh, the terms, when the lease starts, when the lease ends. Of course, every contract in the state of Florida must have an end date in order to be valid. So. And, if, and a starting date, of course. Uh, so that's very important to uh, put it right here. Uh, rent payments, what would be the rent amount? Is it going to be in, in installment or is it going to be paid in full? Very similar to the other contract for the other uh, residential list that we, we just went over. Um, is, are there any taxes? Right here, we should disclose it again. If it's over six months, there are usually no taxes. Um, if rent paid in uh, installment, the total payment installment includes taxes, shall be the amount. So if there is any taxes, what would be the amount? Um, and in full, the same thing. Who's the, who's the payment of the rent is going to? And what would be the address? Um, if the tenancy starts in a different date and we're gonna have to um, adjust um, the rent amount, this section is uh, for that. Um, tenant shall make payment uh, required under the lease by uh, choose the applicable way, either it's a cash, personal check, money order, and so on and so on. Uh, um, if, if, if the landlord received uh, a check that was not good, that was not honored, uh, what are the options then? Uh, then of course we have an option of money order and so on and so on, and whether it's going to uh, accepting more checks in the future, yes or no. Um, uh, the payment prior to occupancy. Very similar to the, con to the lease uh, of uh, apartments. Um, the section are very similar. We have the first month, we have advanced uh, rent, whether it's for last month, uh, we have a security, um, we have a security for homeowner association, a pet, pet security and so on and so on. And when are they due? So um, very important right here. Uh, late fees, if there are any late fees, how much the late fee is going to be and when is it going to be applied? How many grace day do we have? We have five. Uh, days for grace or, or longer, usually five days is the right amount um, for the uh, rent to be paid. Uh, pay pets and smoking, is pets allowed? We can check it here. If smoking is allowed, we can check it here. Uh, notice we need to put the landlord's agents right here, whether it's the landlord, whether it's you, whether it's someone else, maybe their attorney, we can put their information right here and to which address uh, it's going to be sent. So very important right here. Utilities, again, very similar. If there are any utilities that the landlord is gonna take over, 
we can disclose them right here. And again, maintenance, I think we're very clear about that in the other, in the other uh, residential lease. I'm sorry. Um, who's going to be responsible for the maintenance? Is it going to be the landlord? Is it going to be the tenant? Uh, for every and each section right here. And this is pretty detailed. And if there's something missing, you can always select other or you can prepare an addendum for the lease um, to disclose and, and to include other items that are missing uh, for the maintenance. Uh, notification, the tenant should not notif notify who they're going to notify, who's the agent that they're going to notify and to which address if they have any notification. And we can also disclose the phone number of the landlord. The keys, a uh, set of keys, if they're animable keys, garage keys, um, and any other keys, we can disclose them right here that the tenant is going to receive. And obviously, we'll need to return at the end of the lease. Uh, lead based spend disclosure, again, very similar. We're going to select if it was built before 1978 and make the right selections here and make sure that both parties signs the, the lead based spend disclosure. Um, homeowner association approval, again, very similar. Who's going to be paying for the application? Who's going to be paying for potential uh, deposits to the homeowner association? Um, use of premises, um, if the tenant allowed to hang pictures, we can select that. Uh, uh, not allowed to hang pictures, I'm sorry, we're going to select that. Um, different sections, broker's commission, extremely important to insert the real estate licensee information, their, their full name, uh, the brokerage name, and the commission amount. Very, very important, um, at least on your side, to make sure that your side is disclosed here, to make sure that you're going to be paid your commission. Um, if the tenant sign this box to uh, let him know that the landlord is not responsible for his personal items, um, the signature section, the landlord signature, the tenant signature, uh, pay attention here, we have three uh, sections for the landlords to sign for three different landlords, um, single property, single family home, I guess uh, uh, it's more common to have more than one uh, landlord. So that's why we have that. Um, and of course, your information right here as the person who prepared this document to have your full name, your brokerage name, address, telephone number, uh, very important to have it. And again, early termination, whether you want, whether the landlord has the ability to keep the advance funds, whether it's a two months or whatever they're holding, or to have the landlord an option to, uh, of litigation. Uh, to take the tenants to court if they uh, terminate the lease early um, to be compensated for the lease itself. And again, as in the apartment uh, residential lease, the Florida Residential Landlord and Tenant Act, extremely important that we're going to keep that as part of the lease and have both parties initial all the pages to make sure they both know the residential um, Florida Landlord Tenant Act. So that's that's for the lease itself. Uh, we covered a lot uh, so far, um, both type of leases and both uh, both type of leases and the contract to lease, which is the offer to the lease itself and the requirements from the tenant. Now, now, what if we represent the landlord and we need to prepare a listing agreement between us and the landlord? We're trying to get a listing from the landlord. We want to prepare a listing agreement. So, um, of course, like in any listing uh, presentation, what's true for sale 
and purchase also be true for rent. You need to do your homework. You need to know the value of the rent in this area. You need to know this area. You need to know the property. How much is it worth to rent this property? How soon can you find a potential tenant for the landlord and so on and so on. So to, you need to have your homework ready, everything ready. Um, and of course, have the listing agreement ready as well. And we're going to take a look at the listing agreement for lease. And this is an exclusive right to lease listing agreement. And we're going to take a look at it. When uh, you're preparing uh, a listing agreement for a lease, uh, the same is true like in any other document. Uh, we're going to have the parties. In this case, we're going to have the owner, the landlord, um, as the party and your brokerage as the other party, as the listing brokerage. Um, the contract is going, to, is going to have a beginning date and an end date, extremely important. Um, the property address and the legal description are going to be imported directly from, from Simplicity, whether you import it from an MLS or you import it from the tax collector. We're going to have all this information imported automatically, so you don't need to insert it unless something is wrong here and you want to correct it. Um, occupancy. Is the property uh, currently not occupied? Is it occupied by the landlord, by a tenant? And if by tenant, when does the lease end? Uh, the rent uh, rate and uh, period, is it going to be rent yearly? Let's say for 30,000 a year. Uh, is it going to be rent monthly for 3,000 a month? Is it going to be rent weekly for 900 a week? So on and so on. Is it going to be rent only seasonally? Maybe the landlord is using it during the winter and he wants to rent it during the summer. What would be the amount? And from when to when? Um, advanced rent and deposit. And who's going to hold the deposit? Uh, whether it's going to be the owner or the broker. Is the deposit going to be held in a non-interest bearing account? And that's that's um, that applies to the deposit that's going to be held during the lease term not the deposit that's going to be held until the tenant moves in. That's something different. This deposit uh, is referring to the deposit that's going to be held during the lease term, during the one-year lease or, or a few months lease. Um, who's going to hold it? The, the, the owner or the, the broker? What type of, an, of account? Um, if there is an interest, who's going to receive the interest? Um, advanced rent, how much advanced rent are we going to keep from the potential tenant in order for the landlord to accept this, um, this tenant, um, security deposit, pet deposit, is it refundable or non-refundable, uh, credit uh, report fee, are we going to charge the, the tenant some fee for, doing, for uh, producing a credit report to them? Um, and any other thing, association application, if there's any association and so on, um, association approval and so on. Um, are we going to uh, complete the lease for the landlord? Um, are we going to make final inspections and inventory check to the property together with the, with the potential tenant? Um, for this property. Those are important things, whether we check them or not. Are we going to use a lockbox on the property? Very important. Um, much easier to use a lockbox versus going personally and open the property every time. It's much, much more recommended to use a lockbox. Um, advertising. Um, does the landlord allow us to display the property on the internet, uh, the street address on the internet? Um, um, does the owner allow us to display the property on the internet? So on and so on. Some owners don't want that. Um, I think it's, um, it's very powerful to display the property address on the internet and the property itself on the internet because it 
gives much more traffic and much more attraction into the property and we get much, much bigger audience that way. Uh, virtual websites, very similar to being on the internet uh, that refer to um, advertise the property on virtual web, uh, virtual office websites. Some landlords don't want that. So again, um, I think I go for it. I, I think it's important to have the property wherever it's possible, but some landlords uh, don't like that. Um, estimating the property value, again, online, um, and so on. Um, owner obligations, it's right here. Um, the keys to the unit, how many keys the landlord is going to provide to the potential tenants. Um, if there are any addendum, any addenda to the property, we can disclose it right here. Um, compensation, extremely important. Um, what type of comp compensation are you going to receive from the landlord? Are you going to receive um, a percentage of the rent due each rent period? So you're going to receive, let's say, 10% from every rent payment? Or are you going to receive a percentage of the gross lease? Let's say 10% of the entire lease amount. Are you going to receive a percentage of uh, the first month? Maybe you're going to receive 100% or 90% of the first month, whatever it may be. We can disclose it right here. Um, When is the go when is the broker when is the landlord going to pay you if the, if you're not going to receive the money immediately before the lease starts how long does the landlord has to pay you uh, compensation to other brokerages you are going to compensate other brokerages if they gonna co operate with you on this transaction let's say another brokerage brings you a potential tenant, how much are you going to compensate them? And that's very important for the landlord to know. Let's say you take in 100% of the first month, are you going to compensate the cooperating broker 50% of the first month? Or let's say you take in 10% of the entire lease, are you going to, to compensate the cooperating broker 5% from the entire lease? the landlord needs to know that. And if the landlord doesn't allow you to compensate another brokerage at all, then it means you're not allowed to put this listing on the MLS because the only po the main point of the MLS is to compensate other brokerages for bringing you potential clients, uh, their potential clients. Um, so how much are you going to, comp to compensate the cooperating brokerages? if you're going to work with another brokerage and we're going to put it right here. Cancellation fee, um, early termination. If there's going to be a termination of the lease, of the, of the listing agreement, is the potential landlord going to pay you a early termination fee? Um, disputes, uh, we have the option for arbitration. If both party wants to do that, they can initial right here. Um, what type of brokerage relationship are you going to have with your potential landlord? Is it going to be a single agent? Is it going to be a transaction broker, a single agent of a owner or non-representative of the owner? By default, you should always select the transaction uh, brokerage. That means that if you do find a potential tenant to the property, you can represent both the tenant and the landlord safely. Your goal is to find the landlord, the tenant as soon as possible, and whether it's your tenant or someone else's tenant or another brokerage tenant, um, it's just as good. And the goal is to find the potential landlord a tenant as soon as possible. Um, and of course, additional clause, be very careful when you put additional clause, not to uh, be accused of um, performing um, illegal, um, let's say, let's call it uh, 
legal acts, you're not, you don't want to be accused of being an attorney when you're not, unless you are an attorney. So be careful when you add an additional clause, not to add too much, uh, just the most minimal stuff. And if you need help with that, uh, you can always let me know and I'll have our attorneys prepare an additional clause for you um, and write it down. And of course, the signature part with the uh, information of both you, uh, the potential landlord and the listing brokerages or brokerage and the way it was delivered. Um, so that's it. That is the listing agreement. Uh, very important to come prepare to the listing presentation, to have all the information up front, to have this form ready with all the information already on it and just the small stuff that you think your potential landlord would want to change, leave those things open and select it together with the landlord, read the entire uh, listing document before, uh, the listing agreement before you go to the landlord to make sure you know every section and you remember every section by heart when you go to the landlord and it would be much, much easier and much more confident for you to, uh, go like that to the landlord and be prepared um, and know all the different sections and make sure to explain it to the landlord and select together with him or her the right sections that you want to select um, and have them sign the listing agreement immediately when you're there with them. Um, so that's it. We covered a huge amount of information today everything that we almost everything that we needed to know about a residential lease we have one last part uh, before we go um, we're going to find this part on our agent desk which is our system uh, for the company for transactions and, and crm and so on and so on um, we have a, a link right here to background check and this is our company background check system um, here you can have your client do their own background check. Uh, so they can go over the sections part by part. If they're um, American residents, if they live here in the United States and they have social security, they can select option number one. Um, if they are not the residents, not American residents, and they don't have social security and they're foreigners. And we have a lot of those in South Florida, in Florida in general, um, in New York and so on and so on. They can conduct their background check right here and they don't need a social security number. It's a bit more expensive, but for those uh, tenants that don't have social security and do need to acquire residence or, 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 or a place of living here in the United States, whether they're coming on a long vacation or, or uh, to live here for a period of time, uh, that's very important that they can use this application. Um, and if they choose the first one or the second one, it's pretty much the same. It will take them step by step on filling up their information. And at the end, it's going to ask them for their uh, credit card number. So they pay for it directly by themselves. And you don't need to uh, pay for anything for them or collect money for them and then be reimbursed. No, they pay for everything immediately right here that saves you a lot of headache and a lot of time and you're going to receive um, the results immediately it takes about maybe 20 minutes to receive the results just let me know that they submitted that application and you receive the results uh, in about 20 minutes so that's a very very uh, useful and helpful tool um, that you can use uh, to get back on check and you get all the information from your tenants, uh, you get a um, printable um, tenant application, you get uh, a printable photo ID of the tenant, and you get also printable 
background check and credit report of the tenant with any criminal background if they had if they had so or or uh, their credit report with all their um, credit information on it. So very, very important, very useful tool. Um, so that's it. That's it for our class for today uh, for residential lists. I hope you enjoyed it. Um, I hope you learned some. And if you have any questions, uh, please let me know. And I'll be happy to answer, to answer them. Um, and you can always email me and text me if you have any questions. And um, I hope to see everyone next week again on our weekly classes uh, every Monday at 11 a.m. Uh, you guys have a great week. See you next week. Bye.